Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap an action, thriller film called, The King of Jailbreakers. Spoilers incoming. During their night shift, two guards inspect the cells at a Japanese maximum security penitentiary that houses only the most notorious criminals. They soon come across the isolation cell, which appears where the most dangerous criminal in Japan, Masayuki Suzuki, is imprisoned. Infamously known as, Datsugoku O, King of Escape, he is a scruffy middle-aged man forced into isolation for many years because of his incredible ability to escape prison. After the guards leave, Suzuki smiles and surprisingly takes out one of his teeth. A while later, the guards return to inspect the prison's perimeter, but by this time, Suzuki had already escaped. One of the guards senses movement in the area and tries waving a flashlight around to check. However, Suzuki, equipped with incredible parkour skills, manages to evade the light without making any noise. He then pauses for a moment, holding onto the wall until the guards resume their rounds. They finally reach the isolation cell but freak out as they see it is empty. They call for backup in the middle of their panic, making all available personnel in the facility scramble to search for Suzuki. Meanwhile, the fugitive's escape plan seems to be running smoothly as he can avoid detection by climbing up the penitentiary's roof and sneaking toward the other side. As the alarm bells blare, more guards, along with attack dogs, converge near the gate where Suzuki is standing on top of it. Realizing he has reached a dead end, he looks up and basks into the night as heavy rain starts pouring. Suzuki's growing reputation started 12 years ago, as a new batch of prisoners were brought to a medium security penitentiary. Having already escaped prison sentences a few times, he is meant to serve his 10-year sentence in full supervision. Something notable about his appearance is the unusual upside-down MT. Fuji tattoo on his chest. As a guard checks on him, he notices that he does not talk even when warned. He then escorts Suzuki to his cell, which is relatively compact, and immediately, he gets an idea as he stares right above the rectangular window at the top. Outside, one of the guards assures the prison warden, Mr. Kanamura, that he won't be escaping this time. He proceeds to peek inside the cell to follow up on a noise he heard, where he is shocked to find out Suzuki slipped out of the window in quick succession. Later, as the warden receives a berating from his superiors about the incident, a call comes in and they are informed of his successful capture by the train tracks outside the gate 20 minutes after his escape. By nightfall, he is back in the cell though his hands are cuffed tight. A guard peeks through his door slot and finds that he has covered his head with a blanket. Enraged, he reprimands him for sleeping with his head exposed, but the latter ignores him, so he gets badly beaten up. The following day, Mr. Kanamura breezes through records of the escapee's previous incarcerations. Strangely, after a bit of research, a pattern then emerges based on the manner of his escapes. He learns that every time Suzuki escapes from prison, he gets caught at the nearby Tohoku train tracks almost immediately. So at night, the warden brings another guard with him for a routine check, and they discover that he is lying in his bed with his handcuffs unlocked. Bewildered at this, Mr. Kanamura asks him to reveal his secret for taking them off, but he remains silent and gets up to get out of his cell, only to be called back by the angry guard. To make him understand the severity of his previous actions, Suzuki is roughed up by a few guards by order of the warden and will now be subjected to stricter body searches and given no meals the following day. Later, he plays around with a small wire he somehow smuggled inside his cell and uses it to unlock his handcuffs. Amazingly, this wire is completely undetected even as the guards search him from top to bottom. As he sleeps, Mr. Kanamura drops by and notices that the handcuffs are once again loose, which makes him wonder even more about his true nature. The next day, he baffles his superior with his decision to stay at the prison instead of accepting a promotion. A little later, after the new year, he leaves the prison to spend time with his family for a week. In his absence, Suzuki takes advantage of this to execute his plan. First, he removes the wire hidden inside his rice bowl, and then slips it out of the slot of his cell to unlock the door from the outside. After a while, a guard makes his rounds and reaches his cell for inspection, but peeking through the door, he sees the pillow head over the blanket, assuming he is just covering his face again while he sleeps. Seeing no harm with this, he moves on, not knowing Suzuki is not inside, and he watches over him from above the ceiling, carefully not making any noise. He then feels through the wood and punches a large enough hole to climb out of and escape. When the guards notice some wooden pieces on the floor, they look up to see the roof has been broken through, and almost immediately, they declare another breakout. This is just one of the many successful escapes he will make, but by doing so, his sentence gets extended by several years up to life. Meanwhile, Mr. Kanamura gets caught up with the situation as he reads and hears about it on the news. 
Unbelievably, the wanted runaway criminal is always reportedly captured near the tracks. With the media dubbing him as some sort of breakout king, he becomes a cultural icon in Japan, even garnering the attention of children who read about his exploits in the comics. Twelve years go by, and Suzuki is now serving his life sentence at Hakariku Central Penitentiary under strict surveillance, with guards checking in every few minutes. His new cell is fortified entirely with concrete and has several locks on the door. Upon entering it, he immediately looks around and tries to find some way to escape. Meanwhile, Ministry Head Kogora Yura instructs Mr. Kanamura, recently inducted into the Ministry of Justice, to inspect every penitentiary across the nation to cease rising prison breaks. One night, a guard arrives with food and places it inside Suzuki's cell and as he prepares to leave, Suzuki grabs his arm to handcuff him. After calling for help, the rest of the guards enter his cell and beat him until he's unconscious. Upon waking up, bloodied from the beating, he peeks through the slot of his door and studies the guard's movements. The following day, the guards add a few more screws in his rusted handcuffs, hoping to reinforce them so that he may not break free. After laying out another brutal punishment during a snowy winter, he deliberately chokes a guard in vain. As a result, the barred window in the cell gets boarded up. Laying soaked in blood, he notices one of his teeth falling off. As he picks it up, he starts getting an idea, and another plan develops in his mind as he smiles. As the days go by, he starts drawing something elaborate with the tooth in his cell. Suzuki attacks a guard delivering food on another cold night by poking his eyes. His actions have gone far enough in the eyes of the prison warden, and he gives him an ultimate punishment by making him stand as his waist hangs on a chain. As he grows weary, he sings about his plight, revealing he can speak. A year goes by, and Suzuki's condition in the cell has worsened. Maggots have infected the area where his handcuffs are for so long, and his overall physique has deteriorated. Fortunately for him, one evening, the guards enter his cell and take off his chains as a reprieve. Meanwhile, Mr. Kanamura arrives at Hakariku Penitentiary to inspect the facility starting with the dining hall. He immediately thinks about checking in on Suzuki, so he proceeds to the isolation cell and sees a sick and fragile Suzuki dripping with blood and lying on the floor. He feels some compassion for the prisoner but shrugs it off. He later goes to a church to pray until Mr. Yura approaches him about the statute of inmate transfers. He gets informed that overcrowding in prisons is a big issue, so they must execute some unneeded prisoners. Whilst holding a rosary in his hand, the former warden returns to praying seemingly unbothered by the information. Coming back to the moment he stands atop the prison gate during the storm, Suzuki flashes back to the day he was born when his mother died due to delivery complications. Unable to be raised solely by his father due to his incarceration, he is put up in an orphanage though initially locked inside the shed, for he may run loose. One night, the little Suzuki was caught above the roof to look at the stars. His parkour skills further enhance his knack for climbing up tall structures. While practicing on a metal beam in the woods, he is taken aback by the sudden appearance of his father, who recently escaped prison. The two bond for a bit, and while hanging upside down, Suzuki notices a Mount Fuji tattoo on his father's chest, which is identical to the one he has as a man. However, their meeting cuts short when some prison officials arrive and catch up with his father on the train tracks. Seeing this heartbreaking moment, Suzuki vows to meet his father again someday. As day breaks, Mr. Kanamura sees all the correctional officers panicking over Suzuki's escape. He then leaves the prison to catch himself with him. Meanwhile, successfully escaping prison, Suzuki reaches the tracks but stops for a moment when Mr. Kanamura appears. The former warden looks at him and wonders what he is running away from, which makes him relent and get caught by the guards. Seeing that no ordinary penitentiary in Japan could hold the breakout king for long, the criminal department head ultimately decides for Mr. Kanemura to escort Suzuki to the deadliest prison on earth, Prison Isle. Located in the middle of the ocean, this is known as a literal hell on earth by the officials, with hazardous water waves raging on sides. The whole area is teeming with Soviet vessels which deem escape impossible as anyone attempting to leave will be captured. On the way there, Mr. Kane Mura warns Suzuki of the impending doom but confesses that he wants him to see him free, even if it is no longer possible. As he is taken away into the facility, he asks one last question before leaving, why was he saved from demotion when Suzuki tried to break out 11 years ago? He does not get an answer. Now inside, he sees hundreds of guards roaming around the place with prisoners looking miserable. He is then branded with a hot iron rod and immediately locked inside a tiny cell made of steel rods, constricting his whole body and permanently putting him in place for the rest of his life. 
Atop the prison, Mr. Katamura meets with his former superior to assure him that Suzuki will never be able to escape and that he will grow as old as the rest of the 600 prisoners. He then requests to visit the prison library and starts searching for information about Suzuki among the dusty records. He eventually recovers some old files and goes through them one by one. Meanwhile, Suzuki is meditating, and as he opens his eyes, he dislocates both of his shoulders and slowly gets out of the tiny confinement. A prisoner notices him but does not sound the alarm due to his intoxication. Meanwhile, as Mr. Kane Mura engrosses in the research of the Mount Fuji tattoo, an alarm blares all around prison aisle, alerting a potential escapee. This moment does not worry the prison warden, instead, he offers a meal for Kane Mura to relax while they search. He is delighted to mention that his guards finally have the opportunity to hunt and kill a prisoner after many long years. The next morning, several guards split into two groups and roam across the island carrying a rifle. Worried for Suzuki, Mr. Kanamura informs the warden that the facility is meant to monitor prisoners, not kill them but since the standard rules do not apply anymore, he can do whatever he wants. He then goes back to the library to finalize his small investigation and realizes that Suzuki is in fact looking for his dad who is also on the island. He tells everyone about his discovery, much to their surprise. He explains further saying that Suzuki's overall plan was to deliberately get himself into prison and get caught escaping, thus increasing his punishment that will eventually lead him to be incarcerated in prison aisle to reunite with his father. One of the guards then escorts Mr. Kanamura to the infirmary to see the man. Meanwhile, Suzuki is the first to enter the infirmary and sees his father lying on a bed. Feeling a rush of emotions, he approaches him, hoping he will recognize that he is his son. The old man gets up and looks at him in disbelief. Not long after, Mr. Kanamura and the warden's group finally make it there but discover they have long been gone. The duo then escapes the island in a red-winged glider. Unfortunately for the breakout king, he might have to return someday, seeing that Mr. Kanamura discovers he did not flee with his father. The latter is then seen sitting in a corner alone, distinguishable by his infamous Mount Fuji tattoo. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.